Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so today, I am asking a very simple question. Who wants to play a deck with zero energy? We did it back in the day, ladies and gentlemen. We did it with Gyarados from Stormfront. That was one of the best decks. It almost won Worlds one year. It was great. This deck might not quite be as good as Gyarados, but ladies and gentlemen, it is definitely fun. It revolves around Raticate and Yan Mega. So, let's start with Yan Mega. Now, of course, Yan Mega's had a bit of success in and of itself. The lovely Jesper Eriksson won Worlds in the Senior Division in 2016 with a Yan Mega focused deck. And it's all about the ability Sonic Vision. If you have exactly four cards in your hand, ignore all energy in the attack cost of each of this Pokemon's attacks. Or to put it nice and simply, if you've got four cards in hand, Yan Mega attacks for free. 50 damage or 120 if your opponent's active has a tool attached. They can always, of course, not put a tool on there just to spite you. But as I've always said, if your opponent is playing the game in a way they'd rather not, just to hurt you, that is a good thing. Once you break Evolve Yan Mega, you go up to 140 HP, and then of course you gain the attack barrier break, still free. This attack's damage isn't affected by weakness, resistance, or any other effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. 100 for zero energy is awesome, much better than Charizard, but you do run into the slight issue here that if you come across something like a Lycan Rock that should be weak to grass, and in fact is actually weak to grass, you're still not getting a one-hit KO. Should also mention as a lovely bonus here, Yamega has free retreat, and free retreat is always good. The other attacker you play in this particular deck is Raticate. Raticate, and by now I'm, I'm assuming you've kind of figured this out, it's kind of the whole point of the deck. Raticate attacks for zero energy. It has a free attack, now to be fair. It is on a lowland Pokemon, most of them do. Enhanced Fang. If this Pokemon has a Pokemon tool card attached to it, this attack does 50 damage. So now you're doing 60 damage for zero energy. These attacks aren't humongous. Yamega's yeah, only usually doing 50 damage, although it could do 100 with a break or 120 if they've got a tool attached. Raticate's only doing 60 damage. But the key here is that you're doing these on non-EX, non-GX Pokemon that only give up a single prize and you're doing them for zero energy, which means you've got more space in your deck for other cards, and that is beautiful. Just remember that Raticate must have a tool attached. In one of my videos, when I do booster box openings, I always make a deck just from that booster box, and I am a little bit embarrassed to say, on one of my booster box slash deck making videos, I'll put links in the description, uh, I made a, a Raticate deck that had no tools in which was a little bit dumb. What are we going to do with this extra space? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add Bursting Balloon. You've got to have a tool attached if you're going to be doing 60 damage with Raticate. Okay. And you've got a whole bunch of space. You might as well play Bursting Balloon. If it's attached to your active and your opponent does damage to your active, even if it's knocked out, they take six damage counters. And this really helps to mitigate the downside of having really low damage output. And the damage output for these two Pokemon is quite low. But if you're being able to add Bursting Balloon to the damage output, that is very, very handy indeed. Because now Raticate's kind of doing 60. Then they take 60 from Bursting Balloon. That's 120. Then when you do another 60, you're hitting for 180. And then all of a sudden... We're looking pretty nice indeed. Of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention Max Potion here. Max Potion is great because, of course, you're using zero energy attackers. Now, they're quite low HP until you get to your Mega Break. 140 is nothing to sniff at. But if you're playing zero energy on your Pokemon, why not use Max Potion? Max Potion completely heals you with the only downside being that you have to discard all the energy attached to your Pokemon. Well, great news, ladies and gentlemen. You've got no energy attached to your Pokemon. 
Now, I think I forgot to say this at the beginning of the video, so let me make this very clear now. This deck came from the lovely Michael Carey, the same chap who gave me the idea for Snorlax Kiawe. I'm not saying he's the first person that ever came up with this deck, but if anyone is watching this video going, hang on a second, I came up with this deck first... Awesome, it's a really fun deck, but I assure you I got the idea from Michael and Michael alone. He sends me fun deck ideas. I don't make videos on all of them, but the ones I really like, I do. He's a lovely chap, he's also a great artist. I'll put a link to his artwork in the video. And of course, as I mentioned on the previous Snorlax Kiawe video, he literally drew pictures for my wedding, and I honestly cannot tell you enough how amazing the pictures he did for my wedding are. Anyway, back to the deck. Octillery is the only other Pokemon he chooses to play. Here, you're playing a bunch of stage ones. It will take up more space in your deck, especially when you build in your Mega Break. Octillery just gives you so much consistency here that you need to be playing it. Octillery is absolutely brilliant. It means that you can draw until you've got five cards in your hand. And again, you can play a 2-2 line here. You're saving space because of the fact that you're not playing any energy cards. Now, there are a few other cards you want to be relying on in a deck like this. Raticate has a retreat cost of three. Octillery has a retreat cost of two. You need some switching cards here. You can go switch. You can go escape rope. You could even go floatstone here. Raticate's got a high retreat cost. Raticate needs a tool attached to hit for 60. So floatstone kind of fixes both of those problems. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Floatstone in this deck, and I'll tell you for why. You've got Bursting Balloon, as previously mentioned, and you've got Choice Band. With Choice Band, Raticate does 90 damage for zero energy to an EX or a GX. And like I've said, one of my reservations with this deck is the fact that you are going to have to be watching how much damage you're doing. It's not always going to be the most damage ever. So what you do here is you use cards like Bursting Balloon, like Choice Band, to really help your damage output here. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the key. So I don't like Floatstone because of that. Also, if you haven't realized yet, this deck is very reliant on abilities. Yanmega, without the ability, cannot attack because you're not playing energy. Octillery loves the ability here because you need to be drawing these cards. The only real lock we've got here at the moment is Garboda. Alola Muck only turns off basics. You've got stage 1 slash 2. So you need to be playing Floatstone here so that you can be mitigating the damage being done here by your opponent using Ability Lock, you've got to be getting rid of the tool on Garboda. Now, the other slight issue, and it's not a huge issue here, is Giratina. Because, of course, Giratina turns off the abilities of your Break Pokemon. Now, you've got two options when Giratina comes out. You can not Break Evolve your Yanmega, because, of course, Yanmega only loses the ability when you Break Evolve. Or you can just hit with Raticate. Huge issue here. Giratina's got 130 HP and a weakness to Dark. Raticate does 120. You could choose to play a single copy of Professor Kakui here so that you can one-hit KO a Giratina with Raticate. Having said that, Giratina's not going to be attacking in most decks and Giratina's got a retreat cost of two. You may well have time to hit it twice with your Raticate. Either way... I don't think Giratina is a huge problem for this deck. You might think it is. You've got Raticate to hit for weakness and just don't break Evolve, to be perfectly honest with you. And in terms of other little cards to consider, let's just run through a couple more quick ones as we go. Revitalizer is great for recovering grass Pokemon and you're playing a heavy line of Yanmega here. Timer Ball is worth a look because you're playing so many Evolution Pokemon. Although it is flippy, so it turns me off a little bit. Wally is great so that you can turn one Evolve. And of course, if you use Wally to evolve your Pokemon, then that means that you can attack turn one. Going second, get an Alolan Raticate, attack. Going second, get a turn one Yamega, as long as you've got four cards in your hand, attack. You want to be using cards like N and Shauna here so that you can shuffle your hand into your deck. I'm not a huge fan of Sycamore in this deck because you might end up discarding some of your evolutions. And also, you kind of want a hand of five with Shauna 
rather than seven with Sycamore, because it's much easier to play one card in hand to get down to four after a Shauna, so that Yamega has a free attack, rather than playing a Sycamore and hoping you can play three cards from your hand so that you can then attack with Yanmega. And of course, you've got to be playing Mallow here. Any deck that plays Octillery really should be playing Mallow. Mallow lets you put two cards from your deck at the top of your deck. You, you then draw them with Octillery. Mallow is way too good, ladies and gentlemen, if you're playing Octillery. It's, it's just a redonkulously good card. And that's basically it, to be perfectly honest, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fun deck. It's not without its issues. Both your main attackers have very low HP. You're likely to give up a whole bunch of prizes. Speaking of which, for that reason, I should have mentioned Teammates. Teammates would be a really fun card in this deck. Teammates is really good in any deck where your Pokemon get KO'd a lot. Having said that, with Octillery, Mallow does pretty much the same thing, so you may just wish to play Mallow over Teammates. The low HP is a bit of an issue. Your opponent's going to take a bunch of prizes. The low damage output is a bit of an issue, hence why you play Bursting Balloon and Choice Band. And yes, you are kind of... A little bit vulnerable to abilities here. But you've got so many options. You're playing zero energy. You're trading single prize Pokemon, hopefully for GXs. And it's just a lot of fun. I think you should give it a go, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's a lot of fun. I like sharing these more unusual decks with you. This is a fun rogue, and it's one that I think you should give a go. But as always, I want to know what you think about this deck. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. That's where the live action happens. If you want to support this channel, get some bonus pods, etc., you can do so at patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.